Hi guys, here we are again. I, this is our second Facebook Live. Uh, welcome. Today we're going to share with you a little bit about what's going on in our ongoing education with regenerative systems in different places. Testing out different creatures, trying to use some of the same plants we use in a different environment. So our lab here in Southern California, I was curious if I could grow taro, sugarcane, several different things that we grow in Hawaii and wanting to see how that would work here and if we could use them the same way to build soil in this environment like we could in Hawaii. So what you see next to me right here is taro. We're gonna make some lao laos here in a little while. We just happen to, it grows in this environment and it's awesome. So I use it a lot to actually help build soil like this underneath it uh, by growing plants that are nutrient dense and being able to use parts of those plants and throw them right back down to build soil around them that's kind of how I define regenerative agriculture I define it as being able to regenerate the soil around it and as you grow food make the soil better than you started adding nutrients to it in the process so by growing strategically plants that you know are high in minerals and vitamins and allowing them to get composted right into place in the process, allowing the creatures that are around and the worms to eat them, uh, that helps. So taro, this one is uh, bun long. It's not a native to Hawaii, but it's grown in Hawaii a lot. You guys will be familiar with this in taro chips. Uh, a lot of people are not real familiar with the taro plant, but this was a staple of the Hawaiians for about 600 years and all their longer than that thousands of years who knows how long but the taro plant was the main staple you can eat the root from it you can eat the stem from it and you can eat the leaf from it so the root is what was eaten and it was made as poi poi is a starchy root vegetable that's pounded crushed up almost like potatoes but it's a lot denser than that the voyaging Polynesians would actually stick it in a, some tea leaf, which is another plant, wrap it in some leaf, and it would go through a sort of a natural fermentation process and bring itself into a probiotic sort of a suspended animation, which was good for their gut. It's a resistant starch. Um, also, it preserved it so they could travel with it. The original form of poi that they did that with, it was called pa'e'ai. Um, and that was a really dense version, one of my favorite. And if you've tasted poi as a tourist in Hawaii, it probably tastes like gummy, not too much to you. But if you've had poi fresh and you've eaten the root fresh, whether it's as a table kalo or as poi, it's really delicious. And there's several different species of it. The Hawaiians have over a hundred different species of taro uh, way back from when. Some of it's purple and sweet some of it's tan, some of it's white. Uh, again, I said, this is bun long. A lot of the taro, in order to make a lao lao, you have to strip a uh, surface, a little vein off the leaf, because it has plenty of oxalic acid. So you can only eat taro cooked. If it's raw, it'll give you a horrible, itchy throat. So the, some taro has to be cooked for as long as six to 18 hours. This is api, known as famine taro. I'll show you that at another time that grows in some of our aquaponic systems. But the basic taro, you have to cook two to four hours. This taro here, taro is also normally grown in a really wet environment, so people misassociate dryland taro and wetland taro. Um, all taro can be grown dryland or wetland. Just the more wetland you grow it, the more dense it is and you're able to use it for poi. If you're growing it dry land like this, it tends to get a more fluffy texture like a potato. Um, and it's sort of a different creature as to how you're eating it. The leaf remains very similar for making lao laos. I spoke about that a couple times. So what we do is we take fresh wild boar meat and we simply wrap it in, tea, in these leaves, put a little bit of salt in it. We wrap it in another leaf and we steam it or stick it in an underground oven for about two hours comes out with the meat falling apart and it's a very unique flavor of Hawaii it's called lao lao um, yeah so to share that with you that's a lao lao but also my earthworms out of all the plants that they love to eat they love sugarcane they love vetiver grass they love this bun long taro so to be able to come over here and build soil like this out of the things we're growing where this used to be decomposed granite you know a year ago 
and we just have abundant loads of soil. So we've been growing soil with a byproduct of food. And we're in January. Last night I think was 40, 35 degrees or something like that. So there's been cold nights. And if you look around me, look, there's abundant eggplant with flowers and there's giant eggplants sitting inside the house. And there's a lot of these tropical foods that are growing here. And what I attribute that to is the diversity in life that we've been able to generate within this perfect medium of decomposed granite, which is how we make soil. Soil is rock, mineral material, organic material, air and water, all together with all the little creatures that combine it. So this is, I think, a cool example. And again, if this seems a little random, we just want to stay um, consistent with our Facebook Live so that every time we can share something different with you guys. Um, and this is, yeah, the taro plant. We've been growing some soil with it. We're about ready to make some lao laos with it. And we just wanted to share that with you and thinking out of the box and just some different ideas. So how does it build soil? So how does it build soil? That's a great question. If I'm cutting these leaves off that are I'm not going to eat, and it's about give and take, giving some back to the soil and eating some, these ones that have some little marks and stuff on them, all I have to do is drop them right here on the ground. And because the environment is set up as such that I have other plants on the side, the vetiver grass, I can cover this with, the worms live underneath this mulch and they're able to eat all the material we drop right back into living soil underneath them. So it's creating an environment where they're healthy enough to do what they want to do and there's worms and there's um, fungi and bacteria. We're not sitting in a real wet spot but if we really want to dig into the soil a little deeper I'm sure uh, we'll find some worms and stuff around here. But. Uh, we can look in another area. But anyway, that's not the gist of what we're trying to talk about right now. Uh, what were we on? Yeah, oh yeah, how do they build soil? So, anyway, uh, between fungi, wood lice, all different creatures, they chew down the leaves and all the broken down material from the plant and make it into soil right in place. Uh, so that's what we're trying to get at. And so if you can grow things and it's just about how you manage them and what you grow and how you grow it, then you can give and take. And I think the idea of continually giving to the soil while we take some stuff from it, that's what we're getting at with that. So just a little bit of insight on how to grow things that, as you're taking stuff off them, also help to grow the soil. That make sense? So we're gonna trim some more of these old leaves off right here. We're gonna throw those in there. And this is a classic leaf of what we'll make a lao lao with. Isn't that beautiful? We can eat the stem, we can eat the leaf, and it has a really unique flavor. So this is Lao Lao grown in California. Um, yeah, there we go. I don't know what else to tell you guys except that we have started our club and you can join our club monthly. You'll have access to all of our web classes. And link in the description. There's a link in the description. Okay, cool. Everybody, we'll talk soon again. Aloha until next time. LivingEarthSystems.com. LivingEarthSystems.com.